Hi, I'm Dr. Gigi Meineke for FACES, and this video will focus on photo documentation for patients undergoing injectable treatments, such as Botox and dermal fillers. We'll cover why photo documentation is essential to treatment, what equipment's needed, informed consent, patient preparation, and recommended poses. If you're not already taking preoperative photos on your injectable patients, you're at best limiting your ability to improve your skills, and at worst, assuming unnecessary risk. It's well documented that patients often forget how they looked prior to treatment. Photographs are an essential part of the patient record for pre-treatment planning, practitioner self-assessment, and medical legal documentation. Let's start with what you'll need. There are practitioners who use their iPads for photos, and certainly having some documentation is better than nothing. However, using a single lens reflex camera, where you have complete control over settings, along with a portrait lens, will produce the highest quality images. A dedicated space should be reserved for taking photos, since this improves efficiency, consistency, and patient privacy. With respect to the background color, most experts agree that a medium or light blue tone works best for medical portraiture, although neutral white and gray are also acceptable. Additionally, your background should be flat, not shiny, to avoid having light reflected back at the camera. Once you select a color, don't change it. Lighting is a major determinant of image quality. A camera-mounted flash typically results in harsh and uneven lighting in portrait photos, and a ring flash will produce flat lighting which is also undesirable. To produce high-quality medical portrait images, you'll need a minimum of two light sources. Here's a look at the schematic of a basic setup. The photo session begins with a written informed consent. Most authors and editors, including the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors, agree that obtaining consent for images, even those that don't identify the patient, is a medical legal necessity. Next, seat the patient on a stool, ideally with a 360 degree swivel. Have the patient remove any hats, scarves, eyeglasses, or hearing aids. It's helpful to have a headband nearby to remove any hair from the patient's face. Now you should establish the patient's Frankfurt plane. This plane is formed by a line passing through the inferior margin of the left orbit, the point called the left orbital, and the upper margin of each ear canal or external auditory meatus. Position the patient's head such that this imaginary line is parallel with the floor. This is considered the anatomical position of the human skull. Have the patient maintain this head posture for all the vertical head angles. Confirm this position before each vertical photo and correct as necessary. This will assure consistency in your photos. You should know that imprecise patient positioning is probably the most common error in portrait photography. I recommend a minimum of 10 poses which we'll review and demonstrate today as the basic poses for facial injectables. Ten may sound like a lot, but several are simply a repeat of the pose with an added animation. And you'll see what I mean as we progress. We'll also review a number of angles supernumerary to the basic poses, which are very helpful when rejuvenating specific areas of the face. So let's move on to the poses. This is a composite of the recommended minimum 10 poses for facial injectables. We use this template in training as a guide to remember the poses, and it's helpful to have this on a wall adjacent to your photo documentation site. Take the pictures in the same order each time. If you do that, you'll be less likely to forget a pose. We'll first discuss these poses and follow with additional views, some of which are specific to treatment, such as rhinoplasty, blepharoplasty, and brow lift. Here are the full face anterior views. The camera lens should be at the center of the patient's face or centered around the patient's nose. The entire face from trichian to just below menton is included in this shot. Remember to have the patient sit up straight and confirm the Frankfurt plane is parallel with the floor. Having the camera on a tripod as well as having marks on the floor where the tripod should be are helpful measures in maintaining uniformity and distance and thereby consistent magnification. 
The next, you should have the patient turn 90 degrees to the right or left. Have them turn their entire body, not just their head, and this is why a stool with a 360 degree swivel is helpful. Instruct the patient to look straight ahead, as it's often the case that the patient may cast their eyes downward. It's important to remove any large earrings and utilize a headband to secure a clear picture of the patient's earlobes, since this has become a fairly common area of rejuvenation as well. The next poses are the animated poses of the upper face. The upper face should include trichian to subnasal. The pose on the left is activation of the frontalis muscle. You can ask the patient to lift their eyebrows or look surprised. In the pose on the right, the patient has been asked to activate her glabellar complex. You can ask the patient to knit their brow or show you their mean face. For these views, the camera lens should be at the height of the procerus muscle, and of course remember to confirm the Frankfurt plane. The third upper face view evaluates orbicularis oculi. You can ask the patient to squint like they're reading fine print, or pretend that the sun is in their eyes. The lower face poses are a close-up from the nasal tip to the menton. These two views provide a wealth of information when evaluating orbicularis oris, perioral rightids, pregel sulcus, premental hollows, marionettes, nasolabial folds, and certainly the lip. The lens camera should be at the height of the upper lip. This view is referred to as the crown down view. It aids in evaluating right and left malar symmetry. For this pose, you should seat the patient in the treatment chair with the seat back reclined, while the photographer stands behind and above the patient. Have the patient raise or lower their chin until the tip of the nose is even with the menton. This completes the 10 recommended poses for facial injectables. We'll move on to a few more poses, which you can incorporate into your photographic repertoire that are helpful for specific facial areas. The oblique view is often helpful as a visual transition from the AP view to the lateral view. This view is obtained by turning the patient until the nasal tip is lined up with the contralateral cheek. Some practitioners prefer an oblique view with less rotation, and this can be achieved by aligning the patient's oral commissure with the ipsilateral medial canthus. These views, along with the lateral views which we'll show in a moment, are the standard views for blepharoplasty, again focusing on the upper face from trichian to subnasal. The four anterior poses have the patient with the gaze toward the ceiling, looking directly into the camera, gazing down toward the floor, and then with the eyes closed. These close-up shots are also helpful when treating and evaluating neuromodulators in frontalis, subicularis oculi, and the glabellar complex. These are the left lateral views associated with blepharoplasty. In both the anterior and lateral views, documentation of the patient with the eyes open, closed, looking up and down, can provide vital information regarding the extent of fat pseudoherniation. Here are the right lateral views. The lateral views are also of particular value when evaluating and treating crow's feet with neuromodulators. For rhinoplasty, in addition to the five standard views that include the AP view, right and left lateral, and right and left oblique, these two basal views provide critical information about the alar columellar complex. In the view on the left, the nasal tip is aligned with the medial canthi. This view demonstrates the relationship of the tip and the nasal dorsum. The view on the right, which is considered the true basal view, aligns the nasal tip with the glabella. For the plastic surgeon performing rhididectomy surgery, the standard AP views, right and left lateral and oblique views, should include the entire neck. The views here are in addition to the standard poses and shows the patient in the lateral view with the head leaning slightly forward. Ideally, these would show more of the inferior aspect of the patient's neck. This provides additional assessment of skin laxity and redundancy, which is typically addressed by the rhididectomy surgery. And finally, this is a view included when patients are considering neck rejuvenation procedures or mentoplasty. The five standard views discussed previously should also be obtained. This view extends from the nasal dorsum to the sternum. It's required to document the presence of jowling, vertical platysma, and the loss of a sharply defined cervicomental angle. This is certainly one of the necessary poses for patients considered for treatment of the newly approved drug Kybella, or deoxycholic acid, 
which has been approved for injection to improve the appearance of moderate to severe convexity or fullness associated with submental fat. So I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave a comment, a question, or suggest a topic to be covered. And also, please remember to hit the like button. Visit our website and follow us on Twitter. Thank you.